Hello, hello, and welcome back to Money Factory. Last episode, we started setting up our applied energistic system to digitally store all of our items, and that's about as far as we got with that at least. We also expanded on our oil processing system to start making polyvinyl chloride or PVC, and this thing is very, very messy. <laughs> so we're gonna try to fix this up today, but we then use that PVC to help us make uh, better circuit boards and therefore cheaper LV circuits and MV circuits and HV circuits. So where does that leave us today? Well, I would like to jump further into AE2 to start doing some auto crafting. We can basically set up our machines to be able to pull and send items from our whole storage system. And then we'll be able to request different items and patterns and components. All we would have to do in our system is say, hey, I want some capacitors. It'll send all of the items into here and then this will craft it, send it back, and that will complete it. So that's uh, Auto Crafting 101. Hopefully I explained that awfully. I also definitely need to increase my storage again before we get any further today. All right, so we're gonna need a couple of components here to begin even the smallest auto crafting. And that's all gonna start from the pattern provider. We're gonna make lots of these. We're gonna make a couple here first depending on how much aluminum I have. <laughs> All right, here is a pattern provider. This is what's gonna go on our machines. I'm gonna make a bender real quick. And this is the first machine that I want to put a pattern provider on. So the way this works is we're gonna put our pattern provider above it. And then this is where we're going to put all of our patterns. So now we actually need some patterns. We're going to make these blank patterns, which just takes some polyethylene and HV circuit and then some silver wire, but we can get eight of these. And then to turn our patterns into something, we're going to want the pattern encoding terminal. So there's that. We can connect this up to the rest of our system with a flux cable. And then this is where we're going to turn our patterns into recipes. So for example, if we want to use the bender, we're going to want a recipe for plates. Maybe I'll start with aluminum. And then we're going to fill the recipe into the encoding table. We want to remove the circuit that it needs because that bender is always going to be set on that circuit anyway. So then we can take this pattern, pop it into the pattern provider, and then I'm definitely going to need some more Fluix cables, but we're going to connect this up with these. Now I believe in this pack, channels are disabled by default. So if you saw how complicated that got in all the mods 9, we don't have to worry about all of those this time. We can just plug all of our patterns into our one controller and we should be safe. Before, controllers only had a 32 channel limit. And basically each machine takes like one channel. But then once you reach that limit, you wouldn't be able to add more machines until you added another controller. And then you'd have to have a whole big system of controllers to handle everything. But we're living. And we can just plug everything up together here. Just makes life a whole lot easier in an already difficult world. We're going to be slowly working on like planning out a future permanent base. Now that I have this set up and we have like kind of a hub for where of all, all of our stuff is going to come from and where it's going to go. So if you see some random changes in the background, that's all that is. Okay, once I do have everything hooked up, and I think I'm going to have my machines like this. I'm going to save this room for our storage and ME, and ME system. And then I'm going to put our MV machines in a wall like this with pattern providers. And then kind of run with that theme along this for now. But we do have our pattern provider connected. We're going to pop the pattern that we have for the aluminum plate in there. Now we need to do some configuring on our machines whenever we want there to be patterns. We basically want to set our input to the right side, which is coming from the pattern provider. That should take care of that. And then in here, we also want to set the output to the same side, and that's gonna auto output those plates back into the provider. And then we want this little button right here that disables the items from inputting from the output side. 
Right now, this will not work because the aluminum is just going to sit in here and not get sent into the bender. But if we turn this off, it will allow that aluminum to come into the output side. Cool. So we're super close, but we can't quite uh, request those aluminum plates yet. We're going to need one more component that's going to be capable of handling all of the pattern processes. We need a CPU. So we'll need a crafting unit, which we're then going to turn into a 1K crafting storage for now with those storage components. And we can hook this up somewhere as well. And this alone will work as a crafting controller. So now we'll be able to request aluminum plates. All of those should get sent into here and then sent back into our system where they are here. Now with our 1K crafting storage, we'll be able to handle up to 1000 bytes and all of these different recipes take a specific amount of bytes in order to process it. So the more complicated recipes are eventually going to require bigger crafting storages, but for now we'll be able to handle this. So cool, now we can request plates, but now we're probably going to want to work our way towards being able to auto craft these pattern providers so that we can start putting them all over our machines. So taking a look at some of the components that this requires, we definitely need aluminum plates. We can add a lathe to make rods, maybe a wire mill to get these guys, an extruder with a gear mold. And then on top of that, we're going to need a way to craft these in the crafting table. I'm not sure if I want to do this. Maybe. I'm not sure it wouldn't be easier to just craft them in the crafting table. And then at some point, we're going to want to automate uh, these MV circuits. And then obviously these formation cores and everything, there's a lot. And we're slowly going to be expanding our auto crafting and being able to do everything. But it's going to start very slow. Every little bit is going to help us get there faster though. All right, second pattern provider is going to go on a lathe where we'll be able to request rods. So we can just take one of these patterns, pop it in here, make sure we configure our machine the same way. And now we can request those as well. Also going to want a polarizer so that we can automatically make the magnetic steel rods. That's going to be the next one on my list. Before continuing with auto crafting, I'm taking a little detour to make an HV gas turbine which we'll be able to hook up to our already existing benzene line. And this is probably going to eat our benzene over time, uh, but we can hook this up to start generating some HV power. Now the lossless cable for HV is Vibrant Alloy. And this is just Energetic Alloy and Enderpearl dust together, and then we can pop that in the blast furnace to smelt it. I wanted to hook up the HV generator to our blast furnace so that we're not drawing all of our power whenever we're trying to use it. Actually, what I'm going to do is flip this around so that this goes here, this goes at the end. And then what I want to do is have this HV power go into a voltage transformer because I don't have enough cables yet to get this all the way back here. And also, we don't have HV energy hatches, so I couldn't do that anyway. But we're going to output this so that it goes into the back of our blast furnace. We shouldn't need these battery buffers anymore either. Assuming I did everything right, this should be able to work. It looks like it. Hopefully that doesn't completely use all of our benzene. But now we can still run our other multi-blocks at the same time. Cool, that should fix that problem. So now I can make stainless steel, hopefully without having to worry about our power usage. I guess we'll find out. <laughs> Circuits are definitely going to be very important to automate. So I'm wondering if we can't maybe try to do that next. Definitely going to need more pro pattern providers though. So to automate circuits, what we're going to do is take our circuit machine, pop it below the pattern provider again, and somehow I probably just want to passive soldering alloy into here. Um, but that's going to be a future me problem. For now, we can just 
make a pattern for the MV circuits for now. Remove the liquid it requires. And then pop this in here. So then we should be able to attempt to request. Oh, we do have this stuff available. If I make one of these, does it work? Well, all right. Now we can auto craft circuits. We just have to make sure we have the components available, which is what we're going to auto craft next. All these different SMDs I would like to auto craft. But for that though, we're gonna need the HV assembler. Also added a pattern for the HV circuits. Oh, that's not good. That's me. Okay, so I am trying to work on uh, fixing our oil processing because it was not looking too good. And first of all, I realized that we can waterlog leaves now in this version. So thank you three for that tip. And then what we can do is have this output to an ME interface and that should send it into our ME system where we're going to end up storing those two chemicals. We just need some cables over there. Okay, before we go any further, I want a molecular assembler, which also needs another pattern provider. So I've been slowly working around here and I'm really trying not to change too much here and there. I've just been getting a, a couple components and coming up with a final like design that I want to go for for the rest of our base now that we have A2 set up. And I think this is what I like. I liked what I had going in all the mods 9 and I really like green. <laughs> So I'm going to do that everywhere and probably just run like this. I tried, I really try not to do too much off camera, <laughs> but then, uh, I kind of have a tendency to just do things without thinking. <laughs> anyway, I've been getting some components set up, tore down our chemical reactor system, and I'm going to input a new storage for our benzene and power transportation, everything. So what I want to do is have the benzene that's getting made from the distillery to be imported into our ME system for it to be stored instead of going straight into all of the turbines and then have our wires everywhere we're gonna do it like this I just need to get some cabling over there and then once that's connected I've made another new room over here for the fluid storage so we can pop a storage bus on a super tank and then we can set this storage bus that we want to have it hold the benzene and then in our super tank well, that should be connected oh probably because it's not actually making anything and i'm definitely going to replace our extractor so that we can get some extra benzene production but then this should all go over to this super tank oh beautiful and then we're going to lock this so that it only holds benzene from now on now we're able to pull benzene from our fluid storage wherever we need it. The first thing we're definitely going to want to do is have this hooked up to our power itself. And it's a little counterintuitive to do it here, but we're going to anyway. Uh, we're going to put an export bus whenever we want to export it from the system. And this will export benzene into the turbine, which we can then turn into power. I'm probably not going to leave it like this. I'm going to organize everything eventually. This is just to get it working. That should work like that. It should be getting benzene. Oh, it burned everything because I forgot to put a, <laughs> a transformer. Whoopsies. Make sure you're outputting your power right. Okay, this should be self-sufficient now. I do need to get rid of all of this though and move it into our storage. There we go, that kind of cleans it up a little. We can put our excess benzene into our storage. And I also set up two more fluid tanks. This is going to be for hydrogen and oxygen at first. That's what my first ones are going to be, I mean. Because uh, I need to reset our ethylene processing line. What is this even? Ethane, yeah, ethylene, that's what it is. <laughs> so I'm going to move all this. I also set up a pattern provider for the assembler. Uh, right now, I only have this set to electric pumps because we definitely need lots of those for all of these uh, A2 components. 
And then I also made a molecular assembler. This connected to a pattern provider allows it to do crafting table recipes. So stuff like the motors and things like that. You know what I mean? Anything that's a crafting table recipe can be processed in here. And we can just connect more molecular assemblers and pattern providers once this uh, runs out. So then we have our power storage. We just need to start exporting it to places. Instead of having wires everywhere. So now I do feel more comfortable getting our chemical rule set up back up. So I'm only going to use one turbine for now. And then we can run our machines at LV, I think. So we're once again going to start from electrolyzing water to get hydrogen and oxygen. This is going to go into an ME interface. And that stored fluid is going to go into our super tanks. We just need a couple of storage buses. Okay, so I've got a couple of storage buses now, so we can hook these two up so that we can store oxygen and hydrogen. And make sure we lock these, of course. And these ones, we are going to want to turn on fluid voiding, just in case we get too much of it. That way it doesn't back up in our system. But this should all go in there now, assuming we have auto export on. We should see these go up beautiful so now we'll be able to export hydrogen and oxygen along our chemical line so we are going to have to set up our oil processing line again now that we have me connections all right let me go through this again just so i don't lose anybody so oil is going to get distilled into sulfuric light fuel and yes i know this isn't the best way to do this right now or even for like the future but it's the only way we have available to us right now eventually we get like a big distilling tower and get more out of our oil this is what we have to work with so then our sulfuric light fuel is going to get desulfurized in a advanced chemical reactor set this to auto output so the light fuel goes in there and this is where our me connection is going to come in because we want to export hydrogen into this chemical reactor as well so exporting hydrogen into here so that we can start desulfurizing this into light fuel and hydrogen sulfide. Hydrogen sulfide we can electrolyze back into sulfur and some extra hydrogen gas. So this is where we can use a couple of pumps with fluid filters on them to make sure our fluids go into the right place. So hydrogen sulfide is going to go into an electrolyzer, but I don't have one of those, so into a drum for now. And then light fuel will go into a chemical reactor, just like this. And then we're going to need to get steam in here to make... Then we're going to need to get steam in here to make severely steam cracked light fuel. And actually, I don't even know why I'm doing this over here. Because we need this stuff anyway. We need water over here. So, let me move this again. Okay, going to reset up our electrolyzer for hydrogen and oxygen. With an ME interface. Boom, boom. Auto output. We're going to have to pump out this fluid here. The water... All right, there we go. There's that. ME interface is connected again. So we got hydrogen and oxygen. Water's going to go into a fluid heater uh, as well so that we can make steam. And then steam can auto output to this. Uh, that's not right. We want the chemical reactor. Okay, steam should go into here with our light fuel. Then we can make severely steam cracked light fuel. Wrong one. We want severely. Pretty sure. So we do want severely steam cracked light fuel. Which is three. And we can just get rid of that lightly steam cracked. Just because it doesn't produce as much ethylene. Alright, so then our severely steam cracked light fuel is going to go into a distillery. Which we want to distill into ethylene. This will also make carbon dust, which we can pop into a drawer which we will eventually have a void upgrade on, and then we can put a storage bus on it as well to hook it up to our ME system. So now we have ethylene. Now we can turn this into polyethylene and vinyl chloride. So we're gonna have one chemical reactor to make polyethylene, and then another to make the vinyl chloride. And I don't know, if we use pipes for this, will it do it right? I think it's gonna... Okay, it does still put some in each one. So, in one chemical reactor, we're going to combine the ethylene with oxygen to make polyethylene. 
So we want our ME cables back. Alright, so in this first one, we're going to export oxygen from our system. If I can find where that export bus goes. Boom. Oxygen. And then with circuit one, we should be making polyethylene. Okay, we do not have enough power. Oh, that's because we're running at MV. I did not want to do that. MV takes so much more power. Especially these chemical reactors take 120 EU per tick. It's too much. So, back to this. Making polyethylene, which I'm probably going to want to store in our system. So we're going to need an import bus, a super tank, and a storage bus. Now we also need to make polyvinyl chloride. So we need to get chlorine in here. Chlorine is made from electrolyzing salt water. So we need to get that above our chemical reactor. Then we need to get salt water in here. That's going to be another ME thing uh, that we get salt water from all the way over here. We can probably just store it in a drum here. Um, export it into our electrolyzer all the way over there and then deal with it that way. All right, so I went and got a storage bus so that we can put this on the drum that the salt water is going to be stored in. And then I brought over a turbine generator so that we can export some benzene and get this powered up. So then you start making some salt water. So then this will just stay in this drum and then we'll get stored into our system. And then we can pull from it to electrolyze it into chlorine then with an export bus we can get that salt water into the electrolyzer not only is this going to produce chlorine but it's going to produce hydrogen which we'll want to import back into our system and sodium hydroxide i'm sure we will need this stuff in the future so we'll pop it in a drawer so i just finished getting the last of the automation setup that i wanted to for today i think Obviously, everything is still super messy, but you know, you gotta you gotta make a mess to clean up, you know? So the first thing I did was uh, not finish this. I got polyethylene at least, fully automated. Um, and then polyvinyl chloride, I just need to throw a storage bus on this and then make another fluid solidifier so that I can make the ingots for that, which we can then turn into pulp and make pipes. I upgraded our benzene setup by turning these pyrolyzed ovens into uh, HV. I think the problem is I'm low on logs now. So I need to upgrade this to HV as well, which is gonna require another turbine. But just by putting two MV energy hatches on this, um, we were able to run both of these with one turbine. And then I added three more extractors for our coal processing. And honestly, I can probably upgrade these to HV as well, now that these are running at HV. But this is making us some extra wood tar, which is then getting turned into benzene. I know this episode was mostly just me rebuilding stuff and trying to get some auto crafting going for older processes. But in the next episode, we'll get some newer things going. I think I have access to microverse mining. With this, we can automatically generate ores. And with tier one, we'll have access to plenty of ores that we need for these earlier stages. And I don't think this is too complicated to get. And I believe that we have access to all of these. So I think we'll do that in the next episode. Automate some ores, maybe some ore processing. Now that we have HV machines. And obviously there are a lot of things that are left unautomated. Like our <laughs> extruder. Um, and all of those processes, and probably a lot of other things, but that is okay. We'll get around to it at some point. This is just going to be a very slow process of automating old things so that we can get new things easier. But all of this import, export bus, pattern provider stuff is pretty much how we're going to do it for the rest of the series. Doing things like this automatically. I meant to make that a storage bus. Whoops. So yeah, just little things here and there to make our lives easier down the road as we progress into the future. And with that, I think I'm going to leave it for today's episode, and I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next one. Good. Bye.